So there is this group of people, and I'm one of them, who uh, think that the autoimmune hypothesis may not be correct. So in other words, the inflammatory reaction that happens in MS may be secondary to a viral infection, for example. And so what causes this disease is the initial targeting of the oligodendrocyte, uh, and then you get the second inflammatory cascade uh, that triggers the focal lesion and, and, and the, the damage. And so the way to treat that, that disease then would be to prevent the viral infection or treat the virus it, uh, is up front. Two viruses that, that two or two class of viruses, I already mentioned to you Epstein-Barr virus. Um, I personally think it's causal. So if we stop people getting M uh, Epstein-Barr virus, we'll stop people getting MS. Uh, and that's one of the hypotheses that's been progressed by a vaccine trial. We hope when an EBV vaccine does emerge, by doing an EBV vaccine trial in high-risk people, we may be able to reduce their risk of getting the disease. But another group of viruses are the human endogenous retroviruses, and they've been associated with driving MS disease activity. Uh, and there are some treatment strategies uh, that are emerging to treat human endogenous retroviruses. Either they're, ac they're biologically active products, so there's a, a, a company in Switzerland that's made a monoclonal antibody that targets the envelope protein. And we know that this protein is biologically active. It's actually a toll-like receptor 4 agonist. So it may act as a, uh, um, a stimulant to upregulate inflammation. In other words, lower the threshold for triggering autoimmune reactions. So that's currently uh, being explored as a treatment trial. Uh, others, are, including me, are trying to get highly active endogenous retroviral drugs into MS to see if we can su suppress the activation or transactivation of human endogenous retrovirus, and we maybe prevent that cascade. So there are people working on alternative uh, hypotheses. Um, there's a company in the United States that's now looking at uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte cell lines that target Epstein-Barr virus as a treatment, uh, and I'm aware that there's a group of investigators that are, are trying to get CAR T cells, engineered T cells, that target EBV or B cells that are infected with EBV as a treatment target uh, in MS. So we're beginning to see the alternative or viral hypothesis um, uh, being explored uh, further as a, as a strategy in MS. Uh, to conclude then, I just want to say that multiple sclerosis is a global problem. There's an, inc there's an epidemic. An epidemic is an increasing incidence and prevalence of this disease worldwide, and we're seeing some areas of the world going from a low incidence, low prevalence environment to a high incidence, high prevalent environment. And the one example is Iran. You know, within 30 years, it's gone from having a, a prevalence rate of six to ten per hundred thousand to well over 90 per hundred thousand, with a male to female ratio, one male to five females. So something's happening in these hotspots that's triggering. Uh, multiple sclerosis. It's a disease of young people. It's a disabling disease. So it stops people working. So the socioeconomic impact of this disease is extremely high. Uh, the good news is we can diagnose the condition very well nowadays and a lot earlier, and we have very effective therapies. So we should be able to improve the outcome uh, of this disease uh, long term. We also have a lot more understanding about the biology of this disease both in terms of causation and the immunology and the downstream uh, impact of this disease. For example, the neurodegenerative phase, demyelination, <clears throat> uh, and mechanisms to try and restore function. So uh, it's an exciting time to be in this field of multiple sclerosis uh, with a lot still to do.